Hey, Peter, I was reading about compiler optimizations. What exactly is inlining, and why is it sometimes good, sometimes bad? Ah, Stewie, a fantastic question. Inlining is when a function call is replaced directly by its code body. Think of copy-pasting a short recipe instead of fetching a whole cookbook. It's a win for small, frequently called functions. Like a simple getter, you eliminate function call overhead. Pushing arguments, jumping, returning. This exposes further compiler optimizations, but it's a disaster for large functions. You duplicate code everywhere, it's called, leading to code bloat. This increases your executable size and, crucially, causes more instruction cache misses. Your CPU has to fetch new instructions more often from slower memory, destroying performance. Modern compilers like GCC or Clang, with O2 or O3 flags, usually decide wisely, making manual inline a mere suggestion. So the instruction cache is the critical bottleneck then? Is that why it destroys performance so easily? Exactly, Stewie! The instruction cache is absolutely critical. When your CPU needs an instruction, it checks L1, then L2, then L3, then main memory. Each step is exponentially slower. Excessive inlining means your program might not fit these fast caches. You hit cache misses, forcing the CPU to wait for slow memory. This is destructive in performance-critical applications. Real-time trading, game engines, embedded systems. For instance, a cache miss can drop your game frame rate. Pro tip, always profile your code before manual inlining. Do not guess, measure. If you found this insightful, like this video and subscribe for more.